what I really want to talk about today, because I had a question about it, and um, yeah, so what I really want to talk about today is how we can obsess over an ex, and we will often obsess over an ex while we're in a relationship. We'll still have thoughts about them, and it'll be... Um, It'll be what pulls us away often, or when things are starting to go good or are bad, we will start to think about an ex. So I'm going to go through the constructs of this, and I'm going to do it. To, <laughs> I'm going to try to maintain my brain focus to be able to walk you through this. So the first part is letting go of an ex is very much letting go of a story. Now the challenge with that is that you know we have this idea that when a relationship ends you know, the parts of our brains that are involved in addiction, dopamine, all of these parts, when we actually let go of a relationship or have one ended on us, we end up feeling more in love with the person. Isn't that super crazy? That we end up actually only romanticizing the good parts and we forget that they were a prick or that they were rude or that they didn't really prioritize us. And so we end up in this state where we're obsessing over them and we're longing for them and you have to see that this is in some sense a withdrawal. So the first part is, is you must stop communication. You must stop using checking out their Instagram and going on social. You have to protect your emotions. If you do not prioritize your feelings and protect your emotions, you're fucked. Because no one else is going to do it for you and you're going to keep rewounding yourself. Stop listening to Adele during that time. No Adele. No boys to men. That was my breakup music was boys to men. Um, if they don't leave you alone, then you do not have good boundaries. So if you're allowing them access to you, that's on you. You have to have good boundaries. You have to stand in your truth. You have to protect yourself. If you don't protect yourself, no one else is going to. That is the point. That's maturing. That's growing up. That's being an adult. Is all of a sudden we're saying, no more of your bullshit. You keep hurting me because I'm now keep allowing you to because I know you're someone who causes hurt. So you put up boundaries around your heart. I have a, a webinar on my highlighted stories on Instagram where you can actually go on to um, and learn about boundaries. There's a whole thing on boundaries. It's 30 bucks. It's three hours. It's awesome. Okay. Now, the other part is that you have to recognize then that when you are letting go of a relationship, you're letting go of how you thought a story was going to go. So that's the other part. So these are all happening simultaneously. Drug withdrawal, also this, uh, you know, withdrawal of the drug, which is the person. The other part is you're also letting go of this story of how your life was going to look, what you thought was going to happen. Now, here's the real key part is we think that because they're not the actor or, or actress in our story anymore, the story is over. Fuck that. There, that's not true. You are the director. You're not just a fucking person playing a role in your story. You are the director of your story. You're the writer. You're the executive producer. You're in charge of all the shit. So all of a sudden what you do is you go, that person's out. We fired them. There's probably a me too problem. You know, there's some sort of issue and you got rid of their ass. And so now you have a new audition happening. That's dating, auditioning. You're, you got people auditioning. And now you're saying, are you good? Dating is sorting. Dating is sorting. Now, the caveat to this is you have to let go of the thought, the one. There is no one. There are many people that you could work life out with. But you got to find someone who wants to work it out with you. Now, if you believe in the one, you automatically enter a state of scarcity. And that's why we can't let go of the X because we go, but they were the one, but I'm not with them, but they're the one, but I'm not with them, but they're the one. Oh, uh, wait a second. I can't tell them that I want a relationship. They might not want one. They're the one. Well, if they're the one, they're going to want what you want. If they're the one, they're going to treat you well. If they're the one, you're going to grow with them. So let go of the one. Allow opportunity for other people to be. I like to think of it as um, everyone that enters your life is part of the guidance to your growth. And so when you step out of a relationship, no matter how that happens, whether it happened to you, they broke up with you or you broke up with them or it was mutual. We always say it's mutual. That's bullshit. Someone always initiates. And so here's the thing that we need to do is we need to begin to see that each person contributes to our growth and no matter how a relationship ends, there's always so much learning in order to grow and expand who you are. Okay, now, what we need now on the second part of this, although it could be the third part, I've lost track, is that 
There is a, a really important piece, which is having it, the concept or idea that the relationship itself, as you're moving towards people and you're opening up, you might start to go back to thoughts about an ex. And this is because we are preventing ourselves from opening up to this new person. The case of the mystery ex, right, where we start to all of a sudden think about all of them and what's going on, and all of a sudden, you're like, I can't, this is different, this is, I feel different. Now, a lot of things happen when we start to date people who actually choose us, who actually love us, and we actually begin to let them. It can be very confusing to us because we've never actually allowed someone in that space since the hurt. So what happens is, is, and if you answer this question, when I let people love me, they, when I let people love me, they, and or when I love people, they, and you'll see that whatever your story is, how your subconscious ends that story is what you're avoiding getting to. So you're such a brilliant emotional manipulator, because we all are, that your subconscious says, we're almost at that place where we know when I let people love me, they, we're almost at the place where they do that thing. So I'm gonna come up with all these tricks to never get past this point where I'm in control. And so we sabotage relationships, we choose unavailable people, we um, come up with reasons why we can't open up. We start to see that chemistry often is wound-based first. So we're trying to heal things from our childhood, we're trying to heal hurts from relationships. So we still pick people who are bad for us. And so you can think of it in a way that you are sexually attracted to often, because you might find someone who's really good looking, really kind, really open, has similar interests, you know, really, whatever your match is. And all of a sudden you're like, why don't I like them? And of course, on, a, on, a, on an attraction level, that's important. Um, to be able to be attracted to them, but you might start to see that you you have an eroticization of your pain in that you are only um, interested in people who can potentially wound you, and so that is your chemistry. So what your chemistry is really doing for you is that is it, what's happening is you're actually seeking to learn how to grow to say no to those things. So you know when someone says I need to stop picking people who are bad for me. Wake the fuck up to that realization. You're responsible for that knowledge. The moment that you find someone or meet someone who hits a red flag, who's like a past, someone who is not good for you, you have to say no. Put the needle down. Put the drink down. Put the drug down. And no one's going to do that for you. You have to. And you're going to keep repeating the pattern and keep getting hurt till you actually do it. Till you say no, your life changes when your choice changes. Your patterns stop being what they are when you actually um, change with the, the pattern by changing the choice. Now, if you find someone who's, everybody's wounded, you know, everyone has some pain. So if someone's good for you and you are also wounded too, we all are, relationships are where we get healing. So if we can talk about our wounds and we can talk about like, what was the thing you needed as a kid and you didn't get? What was your family like? What was it that really hurt you when you were a child or in your past relationship? And the same is true for you. Like both of you need to have this openness because relationships are agreements. They're essentially agreements and they're generally undiscussed. So what I mean by that is people often say things like, I never wanna get married. Now here's a good sign that there's a wounding with the word and the experience of marriage. Now remember, words, just the language we speak, are just agreed upon definitions. Now to give you an example, I could say, um, I love fuck. Well, fuck in French, means, well, the French people do say fuck in the aggressive term, but it also means seal. So depending on your language and your experience, you could be saying fuck and they could be saying seal and it's both of you have different definitions of the same word. Now, that was a dramatic example, but let's think about this in the context of the word marriage. So one of you has an experience where your parents were married or some people around you were married and there was always conflict and abuse and you know, devastation and infidelity or whatever it is. So all of a sudden your, your definition of the word marriage is different. And if someone else had a loving home where they felt safe and understood, their definition of the word marriage can be totally different. 
So when two people are in a relationship and they don't talk about how they define relationship or what marriage is, one might be like, I really want to get married and the other one goes, fuck that. And, and it's not necessarily that they don't want to be with you. It's that they might define it differently. And so there's a lot of wounding around the word. So this is a, a continued experience that you need to look at how you define things, at how you look at relationship, what you think about, what your past experience of relationship is. And so coming back to the context of exes, look at how you obsess or romanticize the idea of an ex. And what that does is it does not allow you to move forward. It keeps you safe. That's how you use it. You use it as this reward system. Now, you also might require cl require clearing with your ex to send them an email or a message that says, yo, I need to clear this with you. What happened was da da da, da and I need to apologize for my part, and I need to also hold you accountable for what you did. And here's some things that really hurt me, and if you want no contact around that, that's okay. You can write that letter and burn it. You never have to send it. Um, when people fall in love and then go to unsure, it's probably because as the love happens, there's pain that's past the point, so you get protective. So you go in this state of anxiety of like chasing, 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 you start to feel love and you pull back. And so that's that constant dance, okay? So that's, that's that constant dance because there's a point past where you're not sure you can go, and there's also a point where you need to withdraw and protect. So that's the, the pull, push pull. In boundaries, which I was saying that I have that webinar on boundaries that's on my highlighted stories. In boundaries, you can see that um, what really needs to occur is that we often have, we need to build healthy boundaries, which keeps us connected to the other person and protected. But we often have porous boundaries. So we allow things to seep through, right? We take on their emotions, their feelings, and then we're reactive and we push them away. So that's moving from a porous boundary, so allowing things through, and then reacting to uh, and putting up a wall, which we call rigid boundary. If you really want to learn all about communication and relationships and understanding your emotions and how to communicate them, even the stuff about the exes, I have a webinar on communication and emotional intelligence that I'm doing with my friend who's a positive psychologist, he's an educator, he's a master in that area too, and we're doing it on Saturday and it's 30 bucks and you get a copy of it. You don't even have to be able to attend. You can just you can just buy it, and if you can't make it, you'll get a copy of all the material. Um, you know when you have porous boundaries? Um, hey, Aaron, I love you. I miss you. Hey, Mikey. Um, when you have porous boundaries, you can tell because you take on other people's feelings, because you take on and you don't allow yourself to have your own. So there are no boundaries around who you are and what you feel and who someone else is and what they feel. Now that happens often because we were in a family system where we had a parent who was either angry, narcissistic, um, who was all over the place, who didn't know, you know, it, I don't like using the term empathetic narcissist because I don't think, it, as soon as we get to the word narcissist, we, we like go off the definition of what it truly is. People can be selfish sometimes, but really, and, and can have inflated forms of ego, but they there's no, I mean, narcissists by definition are not empathetic. So that would, you know, one of the defining things of a sociopath or a narcissist is a lack of empathy. So enmeshed is exactly the term in that we grow up in this experience where our home is devastating. Maybe we had an alcoholic parent or we had a, um, a parent who was, um, you know, unavailable or it doesn't really matter. But what happens is, is as a child, if you're the child who had to take care of the family or anything like that or you always wanted to protect your mom or your dad from being hurt you automatically are taking on your parents feelings you're you're trying to navigate if someone was really angry you were always on eggshells monitoring other people's feelings and so what happens is is as a child we don't learn how to have our own emotions because no one would listen to them no one would take care of our needs and our emotions. We were busy taking care of everyone else's. And the same is true even if you had an unavailable parent or someone who wasn't around or both because no one was there to even maintain your needs and your emotions. And so this is really important to pay attention to because you can change how you show up and it's this idea of reparenting that you're going to learn how to parent yourself into safe, loving, protected relationships. And you get to this place where you can say, I have the right to this need. Now what happens is, is often we feel like 
when we get into a relationship, we lose ourselves. Now that's a good part of knowing when your relationship is not feeling okay, then you don't feel okay. And so you're enmeshed. If the relationship's great, you feel great. And see how those are, you are connected to how the relationship goes. And so what happens is, is you're not separate from it doesn't mean you shouldn't need your partner. You shouldn't, you know, you know, it's not important what goes on. Of course it is. It's just saying that you need to be able to be able to navigate protecting who you are, developing great boundaries, communicating what you need, which that webinar that's on Saturday will really help you do that um, because it'll allow you to learn how to cultivate an understanding of your emotions. That's really important because emotion evokes motion. It makes us change lives. It makes, makes us change. It makes us protect ourselves in a good way, not a walled way because it's what most people do is they end up in a relationship where they want to say something, they want to do something, they want to express themselves, they want to ask for a need to be met, and they give themselves away. And then they resent their partner because their partner um, isn't meeting their needs. Or they resent their partner because they prioritize them. But then what happens is, is they get pissed and then they react and they burst like a pressure cooker. And then they push everybody away. And so that's going from a porous boundary to a rigid boundary. A resentment, wherever there is resentment, it's a really good sign that you are not honoring yourself. And so we, we think, oh, I'm pissed at that person because they made me do this. But what happens is, is you are actually not prioritizing yourself, so you put it on them, but it's actually your responsibility. And you know, often partners don't even know that you don't, you aren't getting that need met. And so you reactively get it like a child having a tantrum because that's what worked when you were young. So we really need to learn how to cultivate these emotional skills to be able to do this dance with our partner and to be able to hear them and, uh, and them hear us. And so that's exact, I mean, that's as, that's as much dialogue as I can get into today. Um, yeah, I love all of you. If you, um, I mean, I hope you have a really good day. I was going to ask a question, but I don't have any questions. Um, I hope that helps. I'm going to post this so you can rewatch it. I'm going to take it and put it on my Instagram. Hi, Luna. And I really want you to, um, you know, soak in this. And, and please attend the webinar on Saturday. It's going to be freaking awesome. The link's in my bio. And it's going to be, we're, we don't fuck around, man. I just want us all to learn how to have the best relationships possible. And we can all do that. I want you to know that, that no matter where you come from or what your childhood was like or anything, we all can learn how to cultivate really beautiful, loving, fulfilling relationships. You know, I have had to learn how to communicate. I, man, me as a partner when I was young, I'm sure my exes are all like, oh, now he's communicating, that fucking guy. So... I really just want to send you all love and just to know that we're all human. We're all in the same place. And, you know, we don't share perfection. We share, a, you know, fear. We share a lack of self-worth. We share being afraid of being hurt and rejected. And that's human. That's, we're all on the shared path of that.